Our next presenter is uh, uh, Matthias Bösch from. Oh. Yeah, it's Matthias. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Matthias or Wolf? Yeah? He will. Uh, <coughs> His theme will be uh, well, um, uh, close to the others. It will be about teachers during National Socialism and the idealization of school education. The, the development of a student hands-on learning laboratory of humanities research in the Nuremberg School Museum. Okay, thank you first for the invitation. Introducing a current project of School Museum in Nuremberg, Germany. The following contribution will consider the development of a student's hands-on laboratory of the humanities. That laboratory deals with the history of the Third Reich, the school in the Third Reich, and as a part of that with the role and function of the teachers and of the influence on everything that happened within the classroom between 1933 and 1945, according to the subjects German and Biology. But first, some words about the School Museum. The School Museum Nuremberg focuses on the impact of school on the individual human, impact on the society, on the politics and economy. And we enjoy about 40,000 visitors annually. And we enjoy to offer for about five or 6,000 of them workshops on historical themes, but also hands-on learning laboratories for mathematics, as you see this, Matalan, and for natural science. It's called Technikland, but it's for young people and for adults also. And we're develop, uh, developing traveling exhibitions recently about cheat sheets, as you see this one, or about a small um, secret letters, you know, as the, the young um, students are writing on the table, like this one. I am so ugly, me only. About this, um, it's a really nice collection, about 2,500 we have. And it's very interesting how deep uh, it uh, belongs to the, to the school and to the, the inner world of the school. Okay, our basis is a collection of more than 100,000, 150,000 objects and documents. And we are a museum of university and city. The cooperation of the University of Nuremberg in Erlangen and the city of Nuremberg. And now to the topic. Learning laboratories of natural science are a pervasive theme in German secondary schools and becoming more and more an integral part of gymnasium. Everybody knows physical lab, chemical lab, messy lab, all these things. But there are just four or five bigger institutions and a few schools in Germany presenting a laboratory of humanities, where the students do for some extent a serious research on historical or social topics in high schools. Laboratories of humanities were up to date largely ignored by schools, teachers and researchers, and this kind of laboratory is truly a forsaken land. Not for everybody, I think for the most of us not, but in Germany in the schools it is. Now it is time, I guess, that it's worth the school museums going the next step and paying more attention to that kind of learning laboratory. Because there is the claim of the museum visitors, my first assessment of that is, and because it will make the visit of our museums more attractive. My second suggestion, sorry, this is, and because school museums and collections are particularly able to go that way, my third suggestion. But first of all, everybody knows a physical lab or a chemical lab, but how does that student hand on laboratory for historical issues and actual work in practice? 
You see a picture from our prototype. We made it to, uh, together with students in the last um, half year on the university. So, imagine a situation where you are sitting on a chair, having in front of you on a table a historical school object. object. It's surrounded by various further objects, um, by special supporting material, for example, computer books and so on. And you will understand without saying, just by viewing the object and its surrounding, what you have to do, and that there could be hidden exciting questions and issues behind, and how to check and find out these issues and stories behind the historical object in front of you, and how to reconstruct the historical background and the elementary importance of that object for the school of the time. And the laboratory we are planning will run completely without any oral instructions and directives. Oral instructions and directives are characteristic for the um, natural science laboratories and are characteristic for the uh, five or four um, laboratories of humanities in Germany. This Nuremberg study arrangement will give the students the opportunity to observe analyze, develop and reflect hypotheses by themselves. The advantage of the hands-on learning laboratories is evident for me, maybe it only for me. It substantially stimulates the student motivation and interest to come closer to the historical topics. By the way, it could help increasing the historical knowledge and the knowledge how to research and the ability how to shift in perspective, the thinking and the arguing rationally, and of course, the ability to observe, all that will be improved. Important too is, the new knowledge stays longer in the memory. The very appealing self-determination of research work and the work with historical originals or replica could motivate in a particular way. At a given time, students become little researchers, and they are getting very proud of. I could perpetuate and add further advantages, but you know, there's just 10 minutes or a little bit more limit. Let us turn to the suggestions and to the studies. First, visitors claim for laboratories. Do they, really? We know, since decades, we can observe the changing needs of museum visitors, indicated by the run on each and every hands-on arrangement. And by the lower sustainability concerning learning in the museum of the four a long time, well, of before a long time highly praised interactive media stations. At that situation, the students' hands-on learning laboratories do have a unique advantage. They offer both hands-on and sustainability. And there are some other phenomena in museums, community. Laboratories may offer one solution to deal with, for example, the material term, you know, and the run on scenography. But just this form. The next place is make the school museums particularly attractive by these laboratories. It's our experience. Experience in the workshops we've done in the past at Nuremberg School Museum, going the way the laboratories offer hands on historical originals and sustainable learning that can make the visit of a museum very attractive for the schools. You see, um, young students of the, the middle school, it's a, um, a special target group in, in the museums in, in Germany, which is um, broken off but not so uh, beloved. And there are not so many programs in, in Nuremberg for these groups, but um, we enjoy to work with them. And the third thesis, are the school museums particularly able for the laboratory cooperation with the schools? We think so. Because they offer, the school museums offer a topic that is close to the everyday life of young people the world of the school. And the perspective of school 
opens to the perspective of the social and political history development in general. And the school museum and school museums generally are the only one offering a lot of very unique and fascinating objects of exactly that world. And you see here um, German evacu evacuation in the World War in uh, Germany. I think you know, but you can ask later what exactly happened there. In Nuremberg, hands-on laboratory students will have the chance to work with original historic material or with replica, with journals, war maps, diaries, and other school documents. And they will also have the unique opportunity to examine and to do research to some extent. A serious research, not just to have a short view and then to go to the next. They really have to train methods and so on. Two questions will be in the center of their research. <coughs> the spread of the ideology within the school before and after 1933. And the growing up of enthusiasm and on the other side resistance against. And also students will learn how to and how historical sources can and have to be contextualized and interpreted critically. Three examples for historical objects we're currently discussing at the Nuremberg project. Three examples. First example, documents about the denazification of a teacher from Nuremberg. Most of the witnesses in 1946 spoke on his behalf yeah. and they tried to declare, oh this man, he never had been a Nazi. They are speaking Jews, victims of the of the KZ and uh, so left-wing people. But if you read another object, for example, the exercise books of um, this teacher, the exercise books of these nine or ten age years uh, ago, uh, girls, students, and the, the crazy thing is that this teacher he kept um, his own um, denazification document at home and he kept all the, 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 the exercise books of the, of the young uh, people, of the young students at home in one and the same um, place. If you read these exercise books, maybe you change your mind. These essays have been ordered and corrected by the same teacher, by this man, and they are all full of Nazi ideology. But how many factors have influence on the writing of the essay? What is in fact the responsibility of the teacher and what depends on socialization of the children, of the peer group, uh, curricula and so on? And these are questions um, we hope that the, the young students will examine um, if they work with this exercise box. And we know the variety of obstacles to the Nazi plan to ideologize, uh, ideologize all the children. And the third example, come on, okay, that's it. You know these wallpapers, race theory, the same um, the thing applies to the wallpapers promoting race theory in school. The learning arrangement on that station could enable the students how to find out the contradictions in the propagandistic teaching material, the contradictions. For example, what does that old man think work for a small part, a merchant part, uh, head of Germany. But why does that old man Hindenburg, you see him, not look like a normal hero, but like the allegedly, according to Nazi propaganda, lower race of artists? And what should the teacher do if the young um, uh, students notice exactly this problem? Last question. Can we do this? Will the Nuremberg idea of a student hands-on learning laboratory of humanities run? To have the students the ability to work successfully, like uh, that way we're planning at the museum? Okay, we're thinking about it. We're making tests and so on. And since five years, we are working like that in our workshops. Since last year, we have developed four prototypes of that laboratory to make test series with students. And the examples of the unique advantages given above have been impressively confirmed by these prototypes. At present, 
We are developing a new generation of prototype and the two will be get tested by the students. The development of the final design will be worked out together with researchers, didactics, teachers and exhibition designers. And we are actively supported by the head of the internationally recognized Nazi Dokumentations Zentrum Nuremberg. Our opening is planned for November next year. You know, many thanks for your attention. Ten minutes are over. I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you.